Hey, you got 45. Got another military warhorse. Want to show you? Aren't these old bolt guns just special? I just love these things. Happen to have a K31 Swiss K31 today. You saw us with the uh, 1911 uh, carbine. Well, we're moving on up into the 1930s, and this is a fine rifle, highly respected rifle. This one is known for its accuracy and strength and, and just everything. If only this thing could talk. You know, you see all the bumps and the, the bruises to that stock. No telling what those represent. They you know, highly likely uh, represent lots of bangs and uh, bumps, getting them out of a safe or out of the locker, uh, you know, getting knocked around in training exercises, probably represents sprained ankles, maybe even a broken wrist, you know, because training can be pretty uh, intensive, you know, in and of itself. Uh, you know, probably uh, if you see any notches carved on these old stocks, these, uh, these K31s or 1911s, uh, probably represent uh, shooting matches one, right? Uh, because, as you know, the Swiss are famous for being neutral. And these firearms primarily were used to just uh, in a defensive mode, you know, uh, the neutrality uh, status that uh, the Swiss pretty much maintain. And uh, uh, that's just kind of the way the old guns were used. They were, uh, they were kept at the ready, and uh, they were used in training, but not a lot of war history to uh, to fantasize about, as maybe with a, a Garand or an A3, those, those firearms, right? But still, very, very fine firearm. We're going to take some shots with this one, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. How's that? Now, it's supposed to be very accurate. This, this gun, this K31, is famous for being a very accurate rifle. Of course, firearms are only as accurate as the shooter. And let's put a round in the chamber. That straight bolt design and take a shot or two. Let's start out easy. How's that? I see a two liter right here. <laughs> oh, that's a powerful round. Let's go on over there and see if we can pop that red plate. We missed him. We will get even though. He's empty. I think I know where to hold, but uh, uh, pretty much right on. Yes, this is a straight bolt design. Uh, you saw the 1911, and uh, we took it apart. Let's take a closer look at this before we shoot it some more. Magazine's very similar to the 1911. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll link that video to this video. But uh, what they did with the K31, which were, uh, well, I shouldn't say supposed to be. Uh, they really were improvements about anybody who knows these firearms would uh, I think agree the uh, the bolt was shortened it was made lighter and they they consequently lightened the gun uh, having a shorter action enabled them to have a longer sight radius so you have the basically the same length barrel but you have a longer sight radius and for those of you who actually shoot you know that that's an advantage when you're looking down those sights uh, just, uh, just, and then uh, they move the bolt lugs further forward, so it locks up up in here more, and it's actually a stronger uh, action. It's supposed to be stronger, even though it's a little bit lighter and it's a little bit shorter. So the K31 is really uh, a, a famous gun for being, uh, I guess, maybe the uh, I don't know about the ultimate or the uh, the epitome of the straight bolt designs, but it's the one that most people are looking for, and it's the one I wouldn't mind having. This is a, a viewer's gun. Uh, the same fellow who owned the 1911 uh, had one of these too, and he lent this to me. So I was glad to get my hands on I wouldn't mind having one of these, particularly a little bit older one, maybe with a walnut stock. Uh, in fact, I've been kind of looking for one. I just I just like them. They're unique. They're a little bit like the Krag in that they're they're not necessarily, you know, the best gun ever made maybe, but they're really interesting. And, uh, you know, if you like firearms, these kinds of things have to you have to find them fascinating. I think even if it's not the gun you want to take to war, right? But the straight bolt design, very uh, very different, and uh, seems to work. Let's put some more rounds in this magazine. It has a you know removable magazine, and you've got the uh, the Swiss round, the 7.5 to 55. These are a couple of different uh, types of ammo I found. You know the Hornady, and then the PPU. Uh, you know, there's not you know 95 different choices out there. But uh, see, this is 174 grain. 
and uh, see this was 165 grain. That's what we're actually shooting, the Hornady. I had another box. This, there was a couple left in there, I think. But I'm actually shooting the Hornady 165 grain. Okay, Swiss 7.5 by 55. I'll slow this magazine. Holds six rounds, just like the 1911, uh, Swiss 1911. Don't confuse it with the John Browning 1911. Okay, yeah, this thing has some punch to it, too. Six rounds. Pretty interesting design. Okay. Let's take a couple more shots. Now, I still struggle seeing the sight, but uh, it seems to shoot right on if I can get a clear picture. And there's your safety. It's like on the 1911. The gun is hot, but if I put it over there, you know, the trigger will not operate. Can't pull the bolt back. Everything is locked up. So, move it back down here. And we're ready to go. So, why don't we go ahead and take a watermelon out, just for kicks. Let me see if I can hit that one on the tree there. <laughs> oh boy, yes. That round does the job. Doesn't it? I think it's two liter time, too. Oh man. Sent that thing up in the air. Let's try that other one. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right, let's bear down on the uh, plate again. If I can see the sights well enough, I can hit it. If this were my gun and I were going to shoot it a lot, I might have to put some white paint on that front sight. I don't know. Okay, let's see if we're lined up. Oh, hit a little high. That's go. Wow, in a cloud of dust. I really do have a hard time with that rear notch. It's the rear notch more than the front side. Yeah. It's, uh, that's the problem I have with buckhorn sights and these little bitty uh, sights like this. That's why you see me with so many uh, ghost ring sights. But uh, it, it shoots right where it's pointed. It's just hard to get it pointed correctly. It uh, ew, feels good. Feels really good. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I what it is. I, I almost have a fascination with these old bolt guns. They're just fun to shoot. I'm gonna hit the plate one more time. I just wanna just kind of a challenge here, you know. Not a challenge to hit something that large, but it's just a challenge to to see the sights. These old old sights with my eye, my right eye. Uh, let me get one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. What else do we have? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shot at a bowling pin. All right. <laughs> Windage must be on, good job. All right, let's take out this watermelon right here. <laughs> Sweet. Let's take a couple of quick shots into that barrel. Let's just pretend I'm at war. Yeah. Pretty interesting. You can work the bolt pretty quickly, of course, because it is a straight pull design. Let's put three rounds in. I'm going to just uh, shoot it oh, fairly quickly. And I haven't practiced this, obviously. I just want to kind of play around a little bit here. And I want to shoot three. Let's see, what's, what shall we uh, pretend here that uh, uh, the bad guys, the enemy, they just come over the, the hill here. I've got to do something quick. Now, you always want to make sure the bolt's far is, is uh, forward all the way. Yeah. I mean, it's quick to operate, obviously, when it was some training. Uh, you could get to where you could really work it, work it fast. Then you have six rounds, 
so uh, not a bad not a bad uh, situation here. This is a pretty neat one. I prefer the darker walnut stocks, but uh, uh, this is a nice, you know, just a real functional piece. All the serial numbers match, and uh, very interesting, uh, interesting gun. You know, your little bolt release right here. I believe it was the same on the 1911 that we had. And you push down the mag, you get it back in. So the bolt comes apart for cleaning, your safety right there. And uh, you can render it pretty safe there. Nice, nice large handle on your safety. Nothing that's a problem to get a hold of. So uh, just a really functional, well-designed gun, just like you would expect from the from the Swiss. Uh, just basically an improvement over the the 1911 carbine. And uh, uh, again, a little bit more common, you know, to be found than the 1911. And in some ways, more desirable. It just depends on what you're going to do with it. They're all just collectible pieces mainly. And for doing like what, what I'm doing, you know, just owning, appreciating the, the history and taking it out to a range and plinking with it. Just uh, deer hunting, you know, some people uh, hunt with these guns. If I were a deer hunter, I would be tempted uh, to take guns, you know, such as this you know, into a tree stand. I really would uh, just because it's, you know, they'll do just as well as anything else. And I don't know, I just like carrying around a piece of history. You know, it's a kind of a why not. But the, K9, uh, the K31, uh, classic firearm, very popular, well-liked firearm, and uh, a gun that shoots really, really well. Everything I've read about it talks about accuracy. You know, the kind of gun uh, that I guess if you put a scope on it and could bench rest it, you'd really uh, find out. And apparently a lot of people have found out through doing exactly that perhaps, that it is a very accurate rifle and uh, durable and just as well made. So what else can you say? Swiss K31, it's another uh, another piece of history, uh, fun to shoot. Uh, uh, just a matter of fact, life is good.